Welcome to my video on what I've learned about my ABS system. If you're not having ABS problems, you don't want to watch this because it's going to be boring as hell. Uh, anyways, the reason I uh, got into this is I put new brake pads on my car and they're so good I could actually uh, um, skid the tires, which told me that the ABS system was not working. And once I started digging around, I found that someone had cut one of the wires that goes to the ABS warning light. So when I hooked that back up, the ABS warning light was on all the time. Now, if the ABS warning light is blinking, apparently you can pull some codes off of it and figure out what's going on. But when it's on all the time, your choices are more limited. Um, anyways, to start this off, what you're going to need is a copy of the workshop manual. Um, and there's two components in that manual that are going to be really handy. At the back of the manual is the section that has all the schematics of the electrical systems. Um, and on page 447 is this, which is the schematic for uh, the ABS system. Um, now it comes in four different sections. This is four pages that I printed out and then tape them together so I can get an overview of how it all uh, connects together. So, handy thing to have the schematic. Um, and sorry for the use of a computer, but that's where my uh, workshop manual's on. Um, you also get an actual section on the uh, brakes, and that starts at page 271. And if you scroll through it, um, there's a ton of information about the brake system. Uh, you get diagrams of... Um, let me kill some of the ambient light here. Of what's uh, involved in the system. And if you go down to... I'm going to drop this for a second. Page 297. Oops. Okay. Um, there's a nice diagram of the wheel sensors, which is where we're going to start this uh, tutorial. Um, front wheel, rear wheel, and basically you have these little sensing things which are magnets um, connected to the ABS system and those are fixed in place and then you have these little rigid wheels that spin on the hubs um, that generate the electricity which creates a signal. These are called reluctors. So you have the spinning reluctor and the sensors. Um, Now, in the workshop manual, in the brake section, um, they go through the various ABS warning light problems. Um, if you have a blinking warning light, uh, you can pull a error code off and try and track that down. Uh, mine comes under the heading of ABS warning light was always on, and they list the pro causes the electrical supply to the ABS control unit not working, Internal control unit fault sufficient to deactivate the anti-skid function. Internal control unit fault and warning light control circuit or a short circuit of warning light earth lead. Um, and on this they talk about fuses, relays, connectors not properly fitted. So that's a pretty broad list of problems. Okay, sorry for the shaky handhold, but I am sitting in my front trunk now looking back at the windshield. And we're going to go through the schematic and pick out the parts here. Uh, I'm going to start, start with the left upper page, which just has two components on it. One is the left front wheel sensor, and then there's the switch for the brake fluid level. And here's my reservoir, and this is the switch for the brake fluid level, and the wire's going to it. It's four wires, and there's four wires to this plug. Um, so, that's that. We're going to come down to the 
bottom left hand page and in a uh, black square that's listed as the ABS hydraulic box they have four components. Now as you're going to see these are not all in one box, they're actually separate components. The first one is called the switch for the fluid pressure control and it's got five wires going into it and that's this here. Um, this plugs in the way, but basically this is the hydraulic pressure unit. You have the pump down here. Um, this is the switch that turns the pump on and off, so that's the switch for the hydraulic pressure control. And then up on top you have the accumulator, um, which is just a pressure reservoir, basically. It's got a diaphragm in it, and when the pump runs, it pumps pressure into this, and that should hold pressure for a while. Um, so if you just turn your ignition to auxiliary on and if the car has been sitting for a while you're going to hear the pump pumping uh, usually for eh, 20 to 30 seconds to pump up the pressure and then the pump will stop. Um, now one of the things you can do to check the state of your accumulator is if you pump your brakes, you know, once it's all pressurized, pump your brakes like one or two or three times. If the pump comes back on again, then you may have a sick accumulator. You should have to pump the brakes like, you know, five or six times at least before the pump comes back on again. Um, if you think your accumulator's sick, I did do a, um, thread and I'm trying to remember what it was called something like ABS accumulator 101 or something like that um, because this accumulator actually comes off a of Thunderbird so you don't have to get a Ferrari accumulator there are other ones that will fit um, okay so we had the switch for the fluid pressure control and next is the fluid pump which again is a big ass pump uh, it's got two wires going to it, and that corresponds to the two wires going in here. Um, next are the wiring for the actual valves that open and close to give you the ABS effect. Um, and there are two, four, six, seven wires uh, on that plug. And that plug is down here. You probably can't see it for shit. Um, but below the reservoir here is a big plug and you can see the little wire thing for holding it together. Um, so that's the connector for the uh, wires for the uh, actual valves. Although the plug's going into it at the bottom, there's actually wires coming out and the whole bundle of wires goes back and behind this unit and then goes in the back side. Uh, just as an aside, um, well, just a tour of the unit, um, we have the, this is the clutch master cylinder, the brake pedal goes into this part of the unit, then you have this part which is the um, hydraulic actuators, the, the little valves that open and close. And then you have the um, reservoir on top. Believe it or not, this piece, all the, the whole unit and the reservoir, um, according to Recambi America, this thing cost $12,000.